Melissa is an international confidence coach and business mentor. Her passion lies in breaking people away from the idea of how it should be done to doing it however they freaking or fucking want to. <laughs> Life is too short to waste it living with fear and self-doubt. And she helps people realize their full potential by stepping up their confidence game and living life on their terms. Through Melissa's life experience, she is 100% committed to making sure her clients are living their best lives and to the fullest. Regret is one of the biggest issues most people deal with in life, and it is her mission to make sure her clients grab and create as many opportunities as possible in order to get the best that life has to offer. Melissa also has a wealth of experience in business development, having started numerous businesses herself, and she's an expert at marketing techniques and social media. Melissa's ideal clients are those who are passionate about making the most out of every day, are slightly edgy, and are willing to step up their game in order to elevate their lives. By the way, if you didn't notice, there is adult language in this interview. So if you don't like the adult, angu- <laughs> adult language, go back and choose another interview. No, just kidding. Stay here. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, Melissa, are you ready to rock this? I'm so ready. Hey, Chris. <laughs> awesome. You are now live on the air. And Melissa, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us and share value and have a lot of fun. I'm excited. <laughs> so good to be here. And thank you for the intro. Oh, my gosh. That was amazing. Yes. <laughs> You're so welcome. So excited. You're welcome. So let's dive into who you are and how you got to, to being the person that you are today. Share a little bit about your story and maybe some of the challenges that you've overcome to, to get here today. Yeah, cool. Thank you. So I grew up in South Africa and absolutely loved it. Well, you know, slightly biased, but I thought it was just like the most amazing country to grow up in. And I moved to New Zealand when I was um, 20. But like my whole life growing up, I've always, you know, tried really hard. I was always an overachiever at school. Like it was always really important to get good grades. And then as I got into my late teenage years, I started making some really bad decisions, got involved with really bad people. And it, my life really took a turn down and it really took a lot for me to flip that around and to really like reassess. Like I went through this exercise with my dad. I remember it so clearly. He made me map out two different life scenarios. And, you know, one was get good grades, you know, get a Berkshire University, get your degree, get a good job, you know, your the typical like successful type life. Um, and the other one was, you know, drop out of high school, you know, and just go down a really bad path and end up dying really young. And uh, it was a really big wake up call for me. And I was like, okay, right, time to get my shit sorted. So went through all of that and then decided to move to the amazing New Zealand where I live now and absolutely love it. And I loved it. Like I've worked some really amazing jobs, but I always felt really empty. Like it always felt like something was missing. And I think I just felt really stuck in the idea of a nine to five job, but it was safe, you know, like it paid the bills. It was like regular income, but I remember driving home from work one day and I just felt so frustrated and I was like angry at everybody. And I was like, I don't know what's missing. Like there must be more to life. I'm literally wishing my life away during the week. And then on the weekend, trying so hard to like make it go slowly. And I was like, I don't want to do this for the next, what, 50 years of my life, just wishing time away and like hoping for the weekend. And I was like, there's got to be more to life than staying in this like comfortable position. And that's when it really pushed me into the world of self-development and how to grow and how to actually, you know, find your calling in life and what you're made to share with the world and then how to monetize that and grow it into a business where you have the freedom to literally design your day however you please and not be stuck in like the grind of a you know a job that you don't like I mean how many people are really 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 happy with their lives and their jobs but they don't do anything about it because it's comfortable and they're too afraid to take a risk they, they think it's comfortable right but in reality is it act actually come I think it's like quiet desperation quiet misery but they they don't know to speak up they don't know that there's a better something better available for them that's what exactly you and you and I provide for people is like hey you don't have to suffer you don't have to be stuck with something you don't want exactly yeah there are, there are so many ways to do life and I think people are conditioned to think that there's only one way to do it and you've got to like 
you know, step by step, get the good job, get engaged, get married, have two and a half children, buy a house at the white picket fence, work really hard. And then one day when you retire, maybe if you have enough money to retire, then when you're 65, you can do what you want to do. And I'm like, screw that. Like, why would you want to wait your whole life? Yeah to yeah. do what you want to do when you can do it now. Like there's literally, we're the only ones holding ourselves back and yeah, gets me fired up. <laughs> yes, I got it. I hear it. I hear it. So tell us a little bit more about like what you're working on today and, and how you, how you do that with your clients. Yeah. So that's a really great question. The thing that I'm really focusing on at the moment is understanding what people want from life and then really helping them map out, the way to do it. I think really often people have an idea of what they want. You know, they, they, they feel it. There's that nudge. There's that calling. We all know what it feels like and you feel that, but people often don't take action on it because they just don't know where to start. You know, they've got these ideas and dreams, but when it comes to actually making them happen, often we struggle and people just don't know how to do it. Like where to go, how do they get help? So one of my big focuses at the moment is working with people and really understanding what that vision is and breaking it down into like actionable steps where they're like, you know what, I can actually do this and I can do it a lot quicker than I thought. And it's, it's so doable. It's just doing the work, but literally like anything is possible if you are just willing to do the work. Wow. So that's my wow. focus at the moment, getting people out of that comfort zone and being like, right, now, what do you actually want from your life? Let's make it happen. Let's do it now. Let's stop waiting. Do you feel like a lot of people know what's available to them or they, they have a vision for how their life would, would they want it to look or are they super unclear on that? And like, so there, there could be a couple things, right? What do you, what do you find the most that people are unclear on their vision or that they just lack structure on how to fulfill on their vision? I think it's really a mix of both. I think the more you become sort of exposed to, I guess, a, a bit of the world of personal development, you start to think differently. And actually, rather than holding yourself back and thinking that you shouldn't rock the boat or, you know, step out, you start imagining what's actually possible for your life. When really, we all have like unlimited potential. But I think just the way that a lot of people are brought up and like schooling systems, we're really conditioned to play it safe and you know fit in really like society conditions us to fit in rather than standing out so I think it's a bit of a mix of both but I think the more people are aware of wanting something different the more you delve into it and literally like the universe will start clearing the path for you if you decide that you want something mm. like things will start shifting around you it's amazing it's, and it works and it's incredible so did you did you get a lot of this foundation? Because I know you said you your your dad. You sat down with your dad and you did this exercise of two different life life paths. Did he have an influence on you of of personal development or an expanded mindset or anything like that? Absolutely, both of my parents did. From when I was quite young, I was always taught that I could do absolutely anything. Like there was never any, um, you know, there was never any doubt that if I wanted to like go to space I could do that when I was younger I really wanted to be a volcanologist and I wanted to go explore volcanoes and like you know go do a really dangerous job and you know but my parents always taught me that if I decided and if I put my mind to something that anything was possible and I think a lot of people are just you know told that their dreams are silly or that's too big or you're crazy or that's too risky and I'm like screw that like Oh, we listen to other people's influence so much. And I just sometimes wish people would just go internally and be like, actually, what do I want? What's important to me? What's like, this is our lives. Like, hmm. you know, no one else is responsible for your decisions in life other than you. And when people realize that, because I think often it's so easy to blame other people for the results that we're not getting and blame it on your relationship or your children or a lack of time or a lack of money when essentially it's really just a lack of discipline or a lack of decision from you to actually go and take action and do those things you've always wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And prioritizing 
what is it that has to be done? You know, people, people want everything all at once. They want the instant fix, the magic bullet. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's totally comfort zone mindset, but you know, you might actually have to give up TV for a year or a couple of years to be able to achieve your, your dreams and goals or something else that you really value. It's, it's, I heard a, someone say that, you know, how bad do you really want it? Are you willing to give up the thing that you love the most for your dreams, for your success, for your prosperity, for your, you know, building a, a legacy. Like, what is it that you're you're willing to give up? That will determine how committed you actually are to what you say you're committed to. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing I think with um, life today. Like, with we're such an instant gratification time in our lives. Like, technology is instant. Everything is ha- like everything happens really quickly. And people don't have the patience to actually, you know, make sacrifices if you want something. Um, like TV, for example, I don't even watch TV anymore and I don't miss it. Like it's just it really adds no value. And it's so funny. I was chatting to um, one of my mentors about this a couple of weeks ago and um, they were saying like they went really extreme with it. They gave up drinking and they even like, you know, on a really personal note, they said they gave up porn all, all together and like anything that was distracting, any like going out, TV, just things that really add no value and de- like detract from what you're trying to accomplish. If you're willing to sacrifice those things and actually put in the work, like anything is possible and it's still fun. Like, I think there's this idea that you need to like do nothing, have no fun, like literally stay home by yourself and like work the whole time. And that's not true. Like if you're doing what you love, then it is fun and it's fun the whole time. Most of the time. (laughs) Yes. That and, and there's activities that could be substituted for better activities. For example, I know I I just did a hike, uh, like a, a five mile hike or something like that this past Saturday. And I haven't been on hiking in a while. Right. And I used to do some of those habits like partying and, and stuff like that. And to replace yeah. those habits with with better habits and yoga, dancing for Zumba, you know, in moderation, in a way that has you be able to maybe expand your comfort zone. Right. Get past that. How to to do something new, rewire the the patterns and neurons in your brain so that you're able to, you know, just really confuse your your body so that you can you can be in this constant state of learning and creation and and kind of uncomfortability but that's where you you dance and that's where you learn how to flow with life and not be attached or or be rigid or you know that kind of thinking yeah absolutely yeah i love that and exercise is such a great thing i mean most of the the most successful people in the world will always say you know most of them start their days at you know 5 Mm a.m and in some form of exercise and really make the most of that quiet part of the day before all the distractions come in, before your phone's ringing, you know, people get stuck scrolling through Facebook and it's really like, it's a scroll hole. You get stuck there and then you're like, scroll oh, hole. <laughs> I love that. I've never heard that. Let, you're like, oh, what was I doing? Like I picked up my phone <laughs> to check something and like, I've just wasted like an hour of my life scrolling through Facebook. What happened? <laughs> Yeah, and it's, there are just so many distractions in life. So it's picking what's important to you and really sticking to like committing to doing the work and eliminating those distractions where possible. But like we're still human; we're all perfectly human. It happens. We so, still. So what are what are some practical ways that we can eliminate those distractions in your experience? So. For me personally, I've become a lot more strict with my morning routine because I find that it's a really creative time for me personally. And a lot of people that I've worked with, also a lot of other coaches find that early morning to be a really creative time. So getting up early, like I get up at five o'clock every morning and go to the gym. And then after that, not sitting down and checking my Facebook notifications or checking my emails because it really is not critical right then. It's more important to you know, get that exercise in, have a healthy breakfast, do some journaling work, plan out my day and really start getting a, a list. Like what are the top five things by number of importance of what I need to get done and get some structure and later on check the notifications, clear all of that out because it's really not that important. And we just, mm. you know, a lot of people do it. You wake up and instantly you grab your phone and you're checking your notifications, you check your email, you check your Instagram and it's like this instant connection with the outside world the whole time rather than taking a bit of time to reflect internally of like what's important to you, what do you want to get done today, what do you want to achieve, 
without that external influence of, you know, seeing what everyone else is up to on Facebook because it, it taints your mind and it taints the way you think about things, whether we like it or not, because people compare the whole time. And as soon as you see that, you're like, oh, they're on holiday. Oh, well, fuck, I don't want to go to work today. Like, I want to be destroying my liver in the Mediterranean Isles <laughs> on a yacht, you know? So I think <laughs> being a bit disciplined with – external influences and getting shit done before allowing for other things like that. Mm -hmm. And would you say that's like usually outside of people's comfort zones? Do they, do they have a challenge doing that? Do they have a challenge sticking to that routine? Do you find that your clients are like, just keep self-sabotaging themselves? Like, I know I'm not supposed to do that, but I just keep doing it kind of thing. Absolutely. And you know, especially when it comes to sticking to a routine, like, especially coming into winter, like getting up to go to the gym at five o'clock in the morning when it's minus two outside, it's not fun. Like comfort zone, bed, comfort zone. Like you'd rather stay in there. It's a lot easier to do what we're familiar with and, you know, stick to what we know. Like it's easy to sleep in and get up at the last minute. It's easy just to get up and check your Facebook rather than needing to prioritize and do like the uncomfortable work of like actually – what do I want to get done? What's important to me right now? And putting that before what's easy. That's mm. the thing. Like, that's the big thing in life. Like, what's easy versus what's right. You know, what you need to do versus what is just comfortable to do. Mm. Yeah. And how, how, do you, how do you find that um, you can create that, that people are their own best cheerleader, so to speak, that they can encourage themselves that, like, how do you – how do people switch their voice in the morning? Because there's a voice that says, don't do it. Stay in bed. Stay comfortable. Mm -hmm. Screw it all. Like, you know. Yep. And then there's a voice that says, you know, you probably should be getting up and, and doing the <laughs> stuff that you should be doing. So how do you, like, start listening to the to the more empowering voice, so to speak? Yeah. So I think it's a little bit of a mix between practice, like, mm -hmm. actually um, – getting into the habit of doing it because habit is so important in life. Like if you can start just doing it, you know, making it a habit, then you get into that routine and then it becomes normal. It's really just getting started. And that's where a lot of people get stuck and they don't take action is because like starting is always the hardest part. Once you start it and you start building momentum, it's a lot easier to keep that going. And another thing that I found is really cool. Um, I'm sure you know the author Mel Robbins. She's yeah, yeah. amazing and she's got that five second rule and she's like when you're in bed or when you're you need to make a call or when you're about to do something scary and uncomfortable, she has that five second rule where she's literally like five, four, three, two, one, do it. Like mm -hmm. don't even give your mind a second to hesitate, because when you hesitate, that's when you hold back. That's when you activate a part of your brain to say, Actually, this is scary, this is a risk. Um, let's you know, your brain's trying to keep you alive when you're not really in any major risk. But it's just like once you hesitate, you give yourself that moment to talk yourself out of it and you're like, oh, no, 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 back in my comfort zone. So it's real. It's literally like just do it. Like just fucking do it. <laughs> just fucking do it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. So what else do we need to know about getting outside of our comfort zone? Right. So the thing with getting outside of your comfort zone, um, I think when a lot of people try to get out of their comfort zone, there are a lot of feelings that come up initially, like um, a lot of self-doubt. So this is where the self-sabotage comes in. So when people are first trying to get out of their comfort zone, I'd say a really important thing to do is recognize the feelings that are coming up. Like, because we all have different things that come up. And what comes up for you? What is the self-sabotage or the negative talk that comes up for you and actually being aware of it. So for example, if you, let's say you're in a sales role and you need to make sales calls, but you're terrified of making sales calls because, you know, let's be honest, they're scary. Most people don't like making sales calls. Being aware of why that makes you uncomfortable. What is it about that? Is it, um, do you feel unsafe? Do you feel like people are going to judge you? Um, being aware of, what's behind it and then you can start to dig deeper into that so often when we understand what's behind our fears or what's behind what's holding us back from actually taking a risk it's a lot easier to dissect them and then really just flip it around in your mind and decide that you know I choose that that doesn't serve me anymore and my way of thinking has held me back my whole life and I haven't got results because of that so instead 
I'm choosing to think a new thought pattern that, you know, if I'm brave enough to make those sales calls and courageous enough, you know, statistically after every 10th call, I'm going to have one sale and really sticking to it like that, like breaking it down, understanding what's behind it. And then again, like just going ahead and doing it. And so for the people who are like, I know I'm supposed to be doing it, but I'm just not. What, what do you say to them? Just do it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm like, just do it. Um, I, would, I would ask them why. Like, what is it that's making you not want to do it? Hmm. Because if you are really feeling that much resistance to something, maybe you should be looking down a different path. If it's hmm. really like, a, I don't want to do this at all, then, you know, maybe there is a different path for you. But if it's really coming down to like a lack of discipline or really like a laziness, then I'm like, then you need to just fucking do it. Hmm. But it, yeah, I think often like some people can force themselves into doing something like taking on like a, a new job purely for a higher income, but they hate the position and they're like forcing themselves to go to work every day. Then I think that's a slightly different scenario when it's like, you know, actually what, what would make you happy? Like you should want to do that. Even though there's a, a, an element of discomfort in doing those things, there should still be that drive to want the results from that thing. Wow. Wow. And in terms of the people who are just lazy, do you, do you encourage them to get a stronger attachment to their why, or what's the solution to, to get past that laziness in, in addition to just do it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good question. I think um, a really great exercise for people when they feel like when they're holding themselves back is to break down what it is they actually want. Like, you know, often people have a goal and it's a goal that sounds cool. Like, let's say, let's make it a crazy goal, like wanting to earn a million dollars a year. And let's say they really want that goal, but the reason they want it is because it sounds cool. Like, that's the only thing they can think of. Like, oh, it would be cool to earn a million dollars. Um, and often that isn't a strong enough driver to want to do something. There needs to be an emotional attachment behind that. So, you know, for example, when people have a money goal, like really breaking down what that money's for. Like, for example, I want um, X amount of dollars to really take care of my family. I'm going to do that by taking everyone on a holiday. I'm going to make sure that that, you know, terrible credit card debt is paid off. That's making everyone stress out and fight. And then you've got like that emotional connection to it. And that's a really strong driver. That's the strongest driver above everything else in the world. If you can connect a powerful why to the reason you're doing things. I mean, you see people endure the most horrific conditions in life in third world countries or in, you know, really less fortunate situations, but they've got this crazy willpower mm. and they manage to get the most insane things done and it's because they have that really really strong why and it's often like a family commitment or you know a really strong sense of self and why they're doing it and how it's going to make them feel and change their lives mm -hmm. then you've got that connection so if people are being lazy about doing something I think it would really come back to what is it that you want to achieve ideally and why do you want to achieve that like what would it mean to you how would it change your life how would it make you feel to to go do those things and then it sort of clears a pathway when they're like actually I can be comfortable and lazy and never get that thing or I can realize how much that actually means to me and you know go and take action and make it happen yeah and I, I know there's two types of of motivations as well there's um away away from and towards motivation so you could have a strong desire for pleasure or be really going away from pain, yeah. right? Is there one that you found works better for you and your clients or is it everybody's different or what have you found? Um, so when it comes to pain and pleasure motivators, I think, well, everyone is slightly different, but 80%, I think roughly 80% of people are actually motivated by pain mm -hmm. rather than pleasure. So, you know, the pain of not achieving that goal, like being stuck forever and like, a shitty little one bedroom apartment with not enough money, never having a holiday and being stressed out. Like that's a pain motivator to get people to take action. And generally only about 20% of people are motivated by like the pleasure, like the holiday or the big house or, you know, whatever the pleasure would be from that goal. So a lot more people like, I think, yeah, I think it's roughly like 80% are a lot more motivated to get out of their current situation using that to fuel them 
or it could be someone has told them that their goals are stupid and they're never going to get it. Like most people will use that as a fuel. Like it's a pain, like it's painful. It's a painful motivator, but they're like, fuck you, watch me. I'm going to do it. And they get that fire and then they go and do it because they, you know, they're motivated to get out of that painful situation. Mm. Yeah, and I, I've heard that your haters, your haters can fuel you, right? Use that that hating, like people who who spend their entire like life's existence bringing other people down. It's just like, all right, I see what you're doing, and I'm going to use that as fuel to achieve my goals and my dreams. <laughs> Absolutely, and then it's like, watch me, you know, everyone yeah. who said I couldn't do it, like, watch me, I will be successful, and they use that, and it's this crazy, amazing fuel that just pushes them the whole time, and they're like, I cannot fail. Yeah. And then they literally go do it because they've decided it's going to happen. So for everybody who's out there watching live, I want you to type in the comment box, watch me, because you are going to be taking the actions. You are going to be demonstrating that you're walking the talk. And no matter what anybody says, you are going to do what you said you were going to do. So type in watch me in the comments right now. I think that's a freaking awesome phrase to type in and you can just show to the world like, hey, watch me. I don't care what yeah. you think. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And especially if it's outside of your comfort zone. Fuck your comfort zone. Type in watch me. <laughs> watch me get out of my fucking comfort zone. And that's the thing, like just getting that motivation inside you. And like a lot of people just want to prove someone else wrong. Like, you know, this – um. Have you heard of the crab effect? Uh, tell it to me. So basically, like, if you put a whole lot of crabs in a bucket mm -hmm. and one of those crabs tries to escape, what the rest of them will do is they will pull that crab back down. As soon as it's, like, you know, hooked its thingy, thingy. Claws. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as it's hooked that, like, on the top of the bucket and it's trying to escape, what the other crabs will do is they'll start, like, pulling its legs down because they don't want it to escape. And that's the mentality that we have today. Like when one person starts rising up, mm. you know, there are always going to be supportive people, but there are always those people who want you to do well, but they don't want you to do better than them. Mm. So they'll support you up into the point where you start taking off and your success goes well. And then they're like, oh, oh, no, let's pull them down. Mm. Let's, you know, say negative things. Let's get into their head. And it's really like blocking that out because it's just a natural thing. Like, there's always going to be people who don't want you to succeed and it sucks, but that's it's life and you've it's, got to push through that. It's interesting because we're talking about this comfort zone, right? And if we imagine a scale from zero to 10 and 10 being like complete joy and ecstasy and like absolute love and bliss and zero being like, you're pretty much about to die. You're just like miserable, <laughs> hating life. Like, you know, you don't know why you exist. And, um, most people stay between, I think it's four and and seven, four and, and or something like that. You know, four and eight, three and seven, something like that. So they have a range of like four, four, four in in there. And sometimes they'll go up above that that little spectrum. Let's say to eight or nine, right? And when that happens, like you said, people will try to pull them down because they're like, "Hey, you're too happy. Stop being so happy," yeah. right? And if yeah. if people go below the four. Like if they go to three or two, people try to bring them back up, right? Because like, oh, no, 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 don't be so don't be so sad. They try to comfort them. They try to, you know, console them and all that kind of stuff. No, no, like it's okay. It's okay. It's so interesting how people just try to stay in that middle comfort zone like all the time where like people are programmed to, to stay in there. It's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. And that, I mean that, that the comfort zone or that's like really an average zone. Mm -hmm. Like it's. You have an average life, average results, mm -hmm. average ambition, you know, average happiness, average sadness. Ah. It's really like, <laughs> oh, yeah, cool. You get to being 90 years old and it's like, damn it, I'm so glad I had an average life. You know, <laughs> really, I'm really glad that I aimed for average my whole life. <laughs> well, you, you can't even be really glad because you can only be mildly glad. I'm, I I'm mildly I'm glad. Mildly glad. <laughs> that I had an average life. I can't really have any big emotions about it. I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. And like, it's, it's, you know, disclaimer or side note, like it isn't, it's not for everyone. Like some people are perfectly happy with that. And I, you know, hats down, total respect for people like that. The thing that I don't like is when people are really unhappy with their shitty lives, but will, you know, just choose to play PlayStation and complain. I'm like, if you're not happy, change it. But if you are happy, you know, in like a, a normal job or 
you know, with whatever you have in your life, awesome. Like you have won. Like if you're happy, you've made it. Like I can take my hat off to you. I love that. If people are happy, like that's the main thing. As long as you are happy, you know, joy is like the highest motivator in life. It's when we're able to manifest the most that we want out of our lives. And it's like when people are not happy but don't take action and complain about it, then I'm like, mm-mm. No, no, no. Sort your shit out. <laughs> <laughs> sort your shit out. <laughs> Hire a coach, damn it. <laughs> exactly. Like, I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so what else do we need to know about getting outside of our comfort zone, breaking down those barriers, those walls, and shifting our mindset? Yeah, cool. So I think a big thing that I want people to know is, um, like, Nothing really happens in your comfort zone. And in order to get out of there, you need to start imagining a life that you want. Like if you keep making decisions from where you currently are, you will be stuck there. You need to start making decisions from the point that you want to be. Like let's say you were already running a successful business. How would you design your days? You know, now being in a nine to five job, you're comfortable. You wouldn't really do anything different. But if you were to flip that around and instead make decisions from, the space of being a successful business owner, how would you get uncomfortable? Would you be getting up really early? Would you be, you know, taking trips to learn about new sales techniques or getting yourself into environments that can boost your growth and your network? So I think it really comes back to making decisions not from where you are now because that's comfortable. That's what we all do. Like it's that's when you stay in bed. I don't want to change my body, so I'm going to stay in bed. That's comfortable. That's familiar. But understanding where you want to be and instead making decisions from that point, it really pushes you out of your comfort zone because if you want the results, you've you know, really got to be willing to do the work and pushing past that uncomfortableness. And that's when magic starts to happen. Like Once you have the courage to actually go, look, I've had enough. Like I'm done being comfortable, I'm done with average, um, I want a great life, then, you know, edging towards that comfort zone, as soon as you break past that, this incredible world opens up and, you know, people start to realize like, hey, I'm still alive. I didn't die. It wasn't like the edge of death by my comfort zone. Like it is actually possible to push through there. And then you become more confident in your decisions and you start to realize that, like, actually it's not quite scary as I thought it was going to be. I'm still alive. I'm not getting chased down by a tiger. I'm not in any real danger. It's all in my head. Like, and it is like, you know, we say we have like 99 problems, but 97 of them are like completely made up situations in our mind. Mm -hmm. And it's probably never going to eventuate. So just recognizing the danger, like, you know, when people feel the fear of Mm -hmm. leaving your comfort zone, like ask yourself, like, is there actually any real danger here? Is there a real danger and, like, am I going to die? Hmm. And most of the time the answer is no to both. And you're yeah. like, okay. Or I've heard it also, what's the worst case scenario that could happen in this, right? It's like, okay, so I, I ask out the girl. She says no. I have my confidence shattered for the rest of my life. I'm not ever able to ask out another girl. You know, I, I end up dying in, in the streets. And it's like you start hearing yourself, like, say it, right? And you're like, Wait a second. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's so crazy. Um, Tim Ferriss, the author of the Four Hour Work Week, he has this really great exercise called fear setting. Mm-hmm. And basically, what you do is so you write down what your big scary goal is. Like, let's say it is to let's just go with the business example. You really want to start a business, and like, okay, this is the big goal. And then you know, writing down. What is the worst that could happen if you did that? Like list the scenarios and list the probability of them happening. So let's say worst case scenario, your business fails and you lose your $10,000 that you invested into it. Worst case scenario. And then in the next column, just working out if that worst case scenario was to happen, how could I recover from it? And your brain starts to come up with all these solutions and you're like, okay, I could move back in with my parents. I could go get another job to recover the finances. There are all these solutions. And once your brain can see on the other side of that, it removes that fear because at the moment, the fear is just this big black hole of discomfort. And we don't even want to go there because it's so scary. But once you actually break down, like, you know, what's the worst case scenario? Okay, I might lose my money and my business won't work. I can recover. And then, like, what's the best case scenario? Let's focus on the good. 
my business could be wildly successful. I could retire by the time I'm 33. I could do all these incredible things. And I think our brains are just trying to focus on the negative when instead, like, there's still a really high probability of like the really good shit happening and people just focus on the bad the whole time. Wow. Mm. And so it, 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 that creates the perspective, right? Like, Hey, this is the worst case scenario. I already created some solutions and we have to remember what's the best case scenario. Like if this thing's, this thing just popped off, you know, would that be, would that, that be something that really drives me towards it, right? That can also be a determined, a, a, a litmus test of, is this something I really want? You know, the best case scenario, is that what I really want? Or, you know, is something else calling to me more kind of thing? Absolutely. Yeah. And it just, it's such a great way to remove that fear. And I've done this exercise with quite a few of my clients and it's really just mapping out. Like once people are aware of, you know, what is the worst case scenario and how could I recover if that were to happen? How could I recover from that? And once you've sort of got an idea of like, you're going to be fine, you're not going to die, it's all going to be okay, you're a lot more willing to take those risks because they become more calculated risks. You're not just like jumping off the edge of a cliff with no parachute and being like, it's okay, it's going to be fine. <laughs> you know, still being courageous and taking risks, but being aware and being calculated about them. Mm -hmm. yeah okay. what else do we need to know about these taking i, I want to know what else like about taking risks and and calculated risk i'm curious do you have any any insight on that so i guess when it comes to taking risks um i'm a big fan of taking risks mm -hmm. i feel like the best way to get ahead in life is to fail and the more you fail and the quicker you can fail, the quicker you learn. And people, I think a lot of people get stuck in their heads, like thinking things over again and again, but you really don't get anywhere with like thinking about all these things. Like the best way to learn and to take those risks is really to take action. The more action you take, um, you know, the best way of learning is taking action. Like you can think things over as many times as you like, but until you've actually taken that action, you'll never know what could have happened until you ask out the girl until you start that business until you move to a new country you'll never know what that experience will do for your life and if it doesn't work out do something else try again try something different tweak it play with it but just you know try just start trying and start failing i think you know we're sort of i think society conditions us to think that failure is bad and that if you fail you should just give up you know, don't even try. Failing is bad. And I think failure is a really good thing. I think the more you fail, the more you learn. And I mean, some of the most successful people in the world, they'll say like out of everything they do, maybe only between like one to maximum 10% of that will actually work. Mm -hmm. And there's 90% of the shit they've done, like never gets anywhere. But you only see that thing that works and you're like, oh, they've never had any failures. They're hugely mm. successful. Like everything they do turns to gold when it's like, no, in fact, they've just, They've tried more things. They've failed more often and they've figured out what works. They've tested things. They've tried things. They've played around with things and they've taken those risks. So it's really like trying a few different things out, see what works, play with it, change it, try again, just keep going. Like don't stop when something doesn't work and then go back into your comfort zone because you're like, oh, well, I've tried. It's too scary. <laughs> That's when you do like – Keep the momentum and keep going and keep trying and keep for the, pushing. For the people who get hurt really badly and they, they do experience like such traumatic failure or defeat that they're like, I don't know how I'll ever go back out there again. What do you say to those people? I say they can do it. Mm -hmm. I say that we as human beings have the most incredible willpower to get through the craziest of situations. Like, you know, a lot of things that people have endured and made it through, if they had just given up, you know, when you give up, you die in a lot of those crazy situations. And when people say, I just can't do it, there's no way, um, you know, then it's like, well, do you actually want it that badly? Mm. If you really wanted it, mm. would you be giving up? And they're like, well, no, I really want it. And I'm like, okay, we'll get back out there and try again. Mm. If you don't want it that badly, then cool, give up. It's not my problem, really. Like, how badly do you want it? How yeah, yeah. It's for you. Yeah, like you can't. You we can't want it for our clients. You know, they have to want it and and do these actions themselves. Absolutely, and like I can give you all the tools, and I can help you. 
you know, change your mindset. But at the end of the day, like you've got to do the work. Like I can't do this for you. And I, I won't, like, I shouldn't have to do it for you. Like if you, you need to want it badly enough to do whatever it takes to get it. Then it's that simple. Mm. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. So last minute tips on, on getting outside of our comfort zone, anything else that you have that you feel like we need to, we need to walk away with. Um, a really big thing that I just try to get across to people is that I think very often people just let things play out and, you know, there's that, you know, I'll just see what happens or, well, I don't know. I can't predict the future. I don't have a crystal ball. And I disagree with that quite a lot. I think that all of us are, you know, really in control of our lives. Mm -hmm. And even though growth is scary, which it is like nothing is scarier than going through your whole life waiting for the perfect moment to do something and then realizing one day that like shit like I've wasted 40 years waiting for that one moment when I could have done it so many times so I think like it is scary to take action but if you want it and if it means enough to you just do it like please like anybody listening like just stop waiting I can guarantee you like guarantee you on my life that there is never going to be a perfect moment mm. ever you know you can say you'll wait until next week or until next year or 10 years from now when you have enough money but by then like new things come up the whole time and life throws curveballs at us and it's about just putting your foot down and deciding like enough is enough like I want it and I'm gonna take action now and just starting like small steps at a time you don't have to run and try to do everything in a day you know take small steps but keep edging forward like just keep pushing forward little bit by little bit and then you'll look back and you'll be like holy shit my life is completely different I'm so glad I started then mm. rather than waiting for that perfect moment when everything was going to be comfortable and the stars are going to align and it was my grandmother's birthday and <laughs> my Christmas were all in the right position and the moon was full I'm like, it's just these excuses and that's when the self-sabotage comes up when you're like no I'll just wait until the light the lighting is good or I'll wait until I have the right microphone to start that podcast when really like it should be a case of just get shit started use what you have do what you can with what you have and just get started like get that momentum going and then scale it up from there I totally am resonating with this because I, I have been meaning to put out a, a podcast and put these on YouTube and I'm, I'm like oh it has to be perfect it's like no it freaking doesn't just start doing it <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. So many people think, well, you know, there's this striving for perfection before yeah. taking action, mm -hmm. and like, action is so much more important than any sort of perfection will ever be. Like, just freaking start. Like, just do it. <laughs> yes, yes. And for for the people who feel like they're taking enough action, because I know for me, like, I'm, I'm sure that there's there's a comfort zone that I'm in, and I feel like I'm taking enough action. And I know that I have greater potential within me, but I'm like, oh, you know, it'll it'll all work out. Like I'm taking enough action, I'm making enough progress, right? Enough, quote it, like like uh -huh. I and and how do you know if you're truly locked within a comfort zone and you have a blind spot of being stuck there? Like you don't even know that you don't know that you're in your comfort zone. And you think you're like making enough progress. Is it is it just like the difference is your self talk. Like if I talk to myself, like, Hey, I'm, I'm making great progress. I'm being courageous. I'm getting outside of my comfort zone. And if that's my conversation, then I am, or what have you, do you have any insight on that? Yeah. So that's quite funny. Like, you know, people always have these things like what we know, we don't know and what we don't know that we don't know. Yeah. And I think like at every level that you get to in your life, there's always an element of comfort. You always get to that next level. And initially it's like, it's scary and crazy and exciting, but after a little bit, like, you know, that becomes the next comfort zone. So I don't think there's ever a point in your life where you're like, right, I'm completely done. I'm satisfied. Unless you, you know, you've reached a time in your life when you're surrounded by your grandchildren, you've done everything you've wanted to do, you've traveled to every country in the world, mm -hmm. and you're at that position. But I think for people like us and for a lot of the people who'll be listening, you know, there's always another level. There's always a vision behind the vision. So I think when people feel like they've reached a position and they're not sure, I would go back to what your vision is. Like, what is it that you want to create? And let's say you achieve that. Let's say tomorrow, all of that 
fell in place and was all suddenly, you know, true, what would be the next step? Like, what's the vision behind that vision? Like, if you were to think even bigger, like, what would that look like? And suddenly it brings up this whole new, like, ooh, maybe I was comfortable then, but, like, there's actually so much more. There's always more to do. There's always more growing. There's always more to achieve. There's more people to impact around the world. There's always a bigger game to play. So I don't really believe that it stops. Like, I think there's always another level. I love this conversation. It is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, <laughs> Melissa, how can people stay connected with you? What do they do next? Yeah, so um, if people want to stay connected with me, follow me on Facebook. Like I put a lot of free content out on Facebook. Um, you can also email me, hello at melissawithers.com. Um, I'm on Instagram. Just reach out, chat. I'm in most places. I'm on, on online quite a bit, so I'm sure you'll be able to find me, and there'll be a link below somewhere, I think. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then yeah. where can people see you in the coming months and years? What, what will you be up to? That's a great question. Um, and it's one that changed, like the answer changes the whole time. Like I just don't like to sit still for very long. <laughs> so I, yeah, I don't know. I would say watch the space. I'd say connect with me via Facebook probably is the easiest. And then just watch the space. There's always a big vision. Um, I'd like to do a lot more travel. I want to connect with people in different places. And while I love the online space and the accessibility that it offers, I just love being able to actually meet people in person. And I think you really get to build that connection that you have when you're in a room full of people and you get to hang out and actually meet and talk like human beings, yes. you know, above like the awesomeness that is online. So I think for me, definitely a lot more in person, a lot more travel, a lot more just like meeting up with amazing people and collaborating and just creating amazing stuff and changing the world. Awesome. We are changing the world, Melissa. Very, very cool. I love it. And saying fuck our comfort zone every step of the way. Awesome. So Melissa, you are a superstar. This has been amazing. And thank you so much for coming on and sharing this valuable wisdom with our audience. And for everybody who's out there listening, go follow Melissa. She is a super star and there's lots of bright things on her future and that, that whole realm. So I'm, I'm excited. I will definitely be watching Melissa and we look forward to having you back on the show sometime. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kristen. Thanks for having me on. It's been a lot of fun and yeah, definitely get out of those comfort zones, people. <laughs> we are doing it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>